want to welcome you, Tallinn University of Technology, and uh, it's our great pleasure to welcome you, to uh, invite you here and to see all of you here. And uh, let me start from uh, a very brief introduction of the venue. So just uh, some words about where we are. Some of you have been for many times, uh, and, uh, but I know that some of you are first time here. So we are uh, in the Mectory building, and Mectory is a part of Tallinn University of Technology. So first of all, Tallinn University of Technology is the oldest, uh, biggest, uh, and the best technical university in Estonia. And this is also the only technical <laughs> university in Estonia. <laughs> Uh, so, we have uh, about uh, 30,000 students, uh, it's a quarter of uh, all students uh, in Estonia and uh, from the next year we will have just four faculties uh, and one of these four faculties uh, is uh, Faculty of Information Technology where we are working. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, study programs uh, in English, uh, 2,000 graduates uh, per year and 2,000 employees. Uh, <coughs> so, about uh, almost 2,000 international students uh, and it's 40% uh, <coughs> of all the international students. Start here, so we are having this meeting in English uh, and I know that we have uh, international students uh, here. Ahmed uh, is here, he, he was a uh, master's student here and now he's continuing uh, as a PhD and working uh, in our laboratory that we will have a chance uh, to visit. Uh, uh, the aim of this building, uh, the aim of uh, Mectory is uh, to be a bridge between uh, the state, the companies, uh, and university to transfer our knowledge into society and uh, vice versa, to transfer knowledge from society and the uh, needs of uh, uh, private companies to uh, university to make a cooperation and 6.2% uh, of uh, university Revenue comes from cooperation uh, with companies. Uh, that is why uh, establishment of uh, such a place uh, was uh, necessary. Here we are located. All of you who are here have found this uh, building, so you know very well where it is. Uh, it's uh, in the middle of a uh, large uh, campus. Uh, TUT has uh, a very large campus, so uh, we have uh, six uh, buildings, we call it main building, this is the oldest part, uh, we have new li library, new buildings of uh, TUT, dormitory, and uh, also science park is uh, nearby. Uh, the name itself, Mectory, means Modern Estonian Knowledge Transfer Organization for you. <laughs> this is uh, what uh, usually nobody knows, <laughs> what does lectury mean? So, this is uh, the meaning of this uh, word. And uh, as I already mentioned, uh, uh, technology transfer is uh, one of the main, uh, main uh, aims uh, of, uh, of this uh, building. And uh, this is uh, also a networking venue, and we are here, just uh, networking. Uh, we want to popular, popularize uh, uh, engineering, uh, and uh, this is a startup ecosystem as well. Uh, <coughs> Mectory deals with uh, R&D projects. Uh, management uh, of this project, uh, spin-offs and uh, startups, uh, consultation and also Mector is dealing with uh, all the intellectual property issues. Uh, so to formulate the aims of TUT uh, Mector is to first of all to bring together scientists, uh, students, uh, entrepreneurs uh, and uh, 
to solve together practical problems, uh, generate uh, new intelligent uh, ideas, uh, maximize uh, theoretical studies at the university through practice, uh, encourage students' uh, startups, uh, and uh, to address upcoming generations. We, are also, we also have School of Technology and dealing with uh, uh, the youngest uh, generation and uh, finally to guarantee success uh, in internationalization. <laughs> uh, in the in Mectory we have uh, quite a lot of uh, prototyping and uh, testing labs uh, and uh, our lab uh, that uh, we are visiting uh, today is uh, among them. This is here, virtual reality lab. Uh, here, one of the people is in the uh, laboratories, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, listed uh, here, but the number of la laboratories is uh, rapidly growing. It's uh, really hard to be up to date in, with this presentation because we are always opening uh, new uh, labs uh, and we also have studios, studios and demo centers uh, like this demo center, Samsung demo center, where we are uh, at the moment. Uh, so, uh, Mectory Building hosts uh, eight startup companies, uh, they are listed here, and we have many industrial partners. Uh, and uh, these industrial partners will not fit on one slide. They even didn't fit on two slides. Uh, but we still have uh, some free space uh, <laughs> on the third and fourth slide. Uh, thank you. And uh, once again, it's our great pleasure to host <coughs> this uh, event. Uh, so please take coffee and snacks, and also I would like to ask you for our bureaucracy to give signatures here, to register this meeting. Uh -huh. Papers are here when you have time. Maybe you can send it around. Right, right, sign your name. Can you send it around so <laughs> no one has company it. number, with the company name where I'm from. Maybe, yes, it's a more convenient solution. And uh, thank you in advance. And uh, uh, I give the floor to Alexei Tiplikov, uh, who, is, uh, all, who is dealing uh, with uh, our laboratory. And uh, in fact, the creation of this laboratory was his idea. And uh, now he has the honor to, to present this uh, laboratory. Thank you. Okay, yes, so welcome once again. Today we will also uh, visit our lab, just to let you know where it is. If you go down the stairs right here, turn to your right, then walk through the long corridor, turn to your left, there's a very, very specific area there which is decorated to be a, some sort of forest, whimsical forest, if you will. So you will then find us uh, there. But I guess we will visit the lab, so we'll go together. Anyway, uh, my presentation is in general about our lab, so what you can expect from us from calibration, for instance. And I will also present a few projects uh, that we uh, have um, ongoing. So, a little bit about us. So, uh, because uh, we are essentially uh, an academic institution, we present an academic institution, uh, our main interest in virtual reality, of course, is uh, research. However, uh, we also want to somehow apply this research immediately to obtain interesting applications. And these applications should uh, not only be abstract, like just to show all these nice things that virtual and embedded reality provide, uh, but they also have to be useful, and for businesses uh, more so. Right? So, um, 
We have grown out of uh, Alpha Intelligent Control Systems Research Laboratory, uh, which is currently located in the main building of TUT. And uh, because our uh, staff has very different uh, academic knowledge and um, experience, which is shown in this slide, uh, we want to apply all of these nice ideas into practice with virtual reality. So some of the things that we were dealing with are business process control, intelligent control, uh, computational intelligence. Myself, in my PhD, I was dealing with fractional calculus, which is a subset of conventional model uh, extended to a specific, specific uh, topic dealing with fractional dynamics, which is quite interesting. Also a topic that is of current interest is symbolic regression. It is currently small here because we are, we are only starting with that. Uh, but we believe that this can also be of great use in virtual reality applications once we get to modeling real-life phenomena inside of, uh, uh, inside of these um, uh, virtual simulations. So, about our goals. So, uh, because we have these diverse backgrounds and experience, uh, we want to, as I mentioned, apply them, apply them directly to VR AR. Uh, and one more uh, thing about that is that we actually want to develop study programs which will allow more students to kind of um, add to this, uh, to this topic and to kind of apply all of these abstract notions, concepts, mathematical modeling, 3D modeling to uh, real life applications. Uh, moreover, uh, since we are located in Nectary, uh, this is a place where we can actually uh, show everyone uh, what virtual embedded reality is, uh, to allow them also to kind of extend their notions of, um, of what can be achieved uh, using uh, computer science, <coughs> and to enhance their creativ creativity as well. And uh, we do believe that uh, we will find a lot of partners, a lot of collaborations inside, of inside the university, outside of the university, and so forth, so that uh, uh, this in this sense, Metri is a very nice place to be in. Uh, about business relations, so highly valued, of course. So, if uh, any of you represent a business uh, then, uh, and you have any ideas how you can collaborate, please uh, find me later or find any of our other administrators. So, at this point, uh, we may offer uh, readily consulting services and assistance, more so with mathematical modeling. And artificial intelligence. So if your projects demand that, then we are here for you. And uh, this information is also available on the website. Uh, these are our administrators, I'm Alexei, uh, Edward you have already uh, seen. And Christina is also here uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, our primary primary uh, knowledge and skills are listed here as well. Alright, so let us move now to RD projects which is probably more, a more interesting part of this uh, presentation. So, so far we've uh, been trying to do some research uh, in a more general sense. So, uh, one of the ideas that uh, we had about virtual reality and applications of, uh, of this immersion uh, is uh, transferring uh, the ability to have synesthetic experiences to people who do not have synesthesia by default. So what is synesthesia? Uh, essentially synesthesia is the act of experiencing one sense modality as another. So for instance you can hear a sound and you can immediately see some uh, color flash appear right in front of your eyes, or the third eye actually, because uh, it is um, uh, well, a sort of uh, anomaly. So. Uh, <coughs> Some people have this, some people have other types of synesthesia. Uh, we want to try and uh, provide this possibility to everyone, essentially. So because uh, a virtual reality will now have this immersion, and which is coupled with a 360 degree viewport, so the sound may be coming from any which way, and they can be somehow visualized. And we believe that this will actually uh, help in establishing this uh, synesthesia. Obviously, this has uh, numerous medical and artistic applications. Uh, and in what follows, I will show you what we have done up until this point. So, uh, 
we start with this uh, synesthesia where we actually locate the sound and visualize it somehow. So uh, for this, uh, we decided to go uh, one of the ways that uh, one of our PhDs uh, has been using. Uh, that is, we will cons uh, we consider a conical array of microphones, and we use some uh, direction of arrival method, uh, coupled with this SIPFAT uh, method, uh, which allows us to uh, first of all, locate the sound in, in a room, uh, and because of the using this uh, DOA method, uh, it is uh, also possible to apply it in real time, essentially. Okay, so uh, in terms of visualization, uh, currently we envision uh, this as uh, spheres, the sound as spheres. So depending on the <coughs> frequency content, uh, the sphere will have its color different. And depending on the amplitude, the sphere will be of different size. And these will be then constantly moving towards the listener so that he can have this experience of a sound located in the room, but moving as visual uh, excitation towards him. So our first idea was this, and we are currently using the same one. So we have a projection plane where we have, where we have this sound source. We have a microphone array which transfers data, I'm currently using this Agilent one. Uh, to MATLAB Simulink, where we, which we use to prototype this uh, algorithm. And from there, then, we um, somehow establish an interface with uh, the VR sound visualization engine. Currently, we use Unreal Engine. And then this one is transferred to the uh, uh, virtual reality headsets so that the user can experience this. So the sound yes. source can be just some random people talking somewhere? or uh, It can be, but it will be more random then. We first want to kind of make it so that, for instance, somebody is playing guitar, and that this can be actually visualized and sent like this. For me, personally, this is uh, an interesting application, uh, visualizing musical instruments. But we will think about it, uh, we currently, I will tell a little bit uh, about our current progress in a few slides. So the idea is that we have currently this uh, plane here <coughs> to which we project uh, the angles which we detect using this conical array of microphones. And thereby we have currently only XY information. So depth is not currently supported. We are looking forward to expanding the algorithm, but it takes a little bit of research to do that. So uh, from the experiment that we had, uh, we had a moving speaker. So it was simply moving in, a, in this plane. And uh, we used this algorithm to detect the trajectory also. So it started here, then the person moved it like this, then like this, and like this. And so it actually worked uh, pretty well. In terms of uh, analysis of the sound, uh, here's what we got for, um, this is something like 24 seconds, I guess. So we have this um, music playing, a rather abstract clip, I should say. So the um, uh, Fourier transform is given here, and based on um, a particular method, uh, we actually got these sizes and these colors for the spheres. Uh, because uh, the sound clip uh, was uh, rather muffled, uh, this is not very informative at this point, but we have tried uh, simple sine waves, combination of sine waves and, uh, well, basically we mo modulated the signal uh, and it actually was able to detect the correct um, feature of the signal in terms of uh, the most dominant spectral feature. So this is something that we have actually done. We've also published a paper uh, on a local conference uh, now uh, about this. So if you're interested, you can actually find, find out. About it. And uh, in terms of recent developments, we've uh, assembled a more professional, let's say, setup, consisting now only four microphones. Uh, we 3D printed this uh, uh, back, uh, the holder, uh, and uh, put uh, Behringer C2 microphones in this configuration, and we are currently in the pro process of testing this one. So we will have probably some results about this in uh, January 2017. Uh, this is one of the applications. Uh, the other one, which is of interest to us, is uh, control objects in virtual reality. Now this is our lab in the main building, uh, the control lab. So. It has uh, many objects that resemble uh, real-life industrial plants. For instance, this one is the uh, multi-tank system. This one is a 3D crane. Uh, here we also have a tower crane, uh, something that resembles a helicopter, which is called a two-rotor system. Also here, a little bit visible is an ABS system. 
And so we have all these objects that somehow can be visualized, more so those that deal with mechanics, but this one as well, for instance. So uh, what we want to do with this one is because we have a limited number of these objects in the lab and they are quite expensive to uh, service, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to visualize them in virtual reality, but more so uh, what we want is to uh, have highly accurate mathematical models. So this is where the symbolic regression and all the modeling stuff comes in, into play. So because we have these um, uh, skills and expertise, uh, we, we can actually do this. And we have been uh, involved with this for half a year. And so far we have uh, modeled uh, three uh, objects. Some of these uh, were also modeled by our students. So if we go, for, for instance, from the MLS model, which was not shown in the previous picture, so this is just a magnetic levitation system. Here we have a sphere that levitates due, uh, due to this magnet when it is enabled. So uh, the object may seem simple, but it's quite interesting to model. It, uh, it has a nonlinear uh, mathematical model, and it is open loop unstable. So the only way that we can levitate the sphere is by applying a control loop there. So we need some sort of controller for it, always. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So. From this one, we go to a 3D model, like this one, and then we simply put it into Unreal Engine, and then we can show our students that here's the plant, and um, uh, we can somehow uh, simulate it. Uh, currently, we do this in MATLAB, but we can also use these models implemented in uh, software, say in Unreal Engine or anywhere else, maybe in Unity as well. <coughs> okay, so uh, this is just one more example. So the student uh, had developed the model of the 3D crane, which is shown here. So currently she is controlling it from, from a joystick, from, which is running inside of, the model itself is running inside MATLAB, which cannot be seen in this here. And um, uh, it is transferring this data to Unreal Engine, where uh, we can see the visualization. She's currently experiencing it in virtual reality. And as you probably know, one thing to detect whether this implementation was actually successful is that if you want to reach out and grab the object, then it's there for you. And its immersion has been achieved. And we have achieved that with all three objects. So uh, even though this obviously is not uh, completely detailed as the MLS, for example. So are they controlling the real object at the same time? Uh, no. No. Only uh, this, this can be used for validation once we get to that point, when we get this nice linear model. Uh, we can actually do that. We can have both the object and the virtual object working at the same time to validate. So I believe this, is, uh, this will be interesting. Uh, I guess this will be possible when we move the lab from the main building when we go to the other building during the reform of the university. So, uh, yet another object. Uh, or rather, application. So, uh, this one has to do with uh, virtual city modeling. Um, so, in this one, what we want to do is uh, we want to somehow implement uh, large-scale housing and tra transportation environments uh, for virtual reality applications. Uh, some of them are listed here. So, for instance, the first thing that comes to mind is virtual driving and everything associated with it. We've been in long talks with uh, the Department of Transportation here. Uh, so they have also shown some interest towards that, but they, it takes a long time for them to, to kind of uh, get involved with this. So uh, we are hoping for the best on that side. Uh, but other than that, we also have uh, urban orientation, architectural walkthroughs, and uh, virtual traveling guides, which is also interesting applications. So uh, the uh, application that I'm going to show you now was done in, uh, by only two B, uh, bachelor students, but during their work, they have done a great work. They've, um, in two or three months' time, they've taken over a thousand pictures and they simply went out to Lastenman and they basically remodeled a part of the district there. And uh, the attention, attention to the detail is staggering. So, uh, also something that we have been working on is a tool for automating the task of finding complex <coughs> roads with respect to landscape. And this is also a video I'm going to show you now. So, uh, this one is the uh, part of the district demo. So it's a basic walkthrough and you can see that the attention to detail is amazing here, especially for bachelor level students. So, <clears throat> and here, um, this part is near the ice hall. So 
uh, you, you will be able to see this in, um, in virtual reality today using Oculus Rift. We've um, recently uh, put it to work there. So uh, we can use this area essentially for, say, driving lessons, for modeling uh, different situ road situations as well, because in Las Nomea the parking space is limited and it is usual uh, that uh, it is quite difficult to navigate these, uh, 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 th this place. So you can see the ice hall here. And this is the place where uh, the simulation starts in uh, virtual reality that we have there. So the, the photos they took were just for reference or were they actually used as some pictures or uh, they, they made a lot of photos and they used those, uh, they uh, processed them and made textures from them. That was quite a, lot, uh, a big effort. So uh, they uh, used photogrammetry in their modeling? Uh, let's say manual. So, so they manually done, uh, have done all this. Vegetation they have used from, they downloaded that from existing packages. Uh, but everything else they've done uh, painstakingly, with painstaking accuracy. So, so yeah. So uh, you will be able to experience this uh, later too. How many square kilometers is this? It's... Uh, <laughs> two, two and a half. But based on that uh, experience, we, we can actually now do, do uh, uh, more applications in this in this, in this project. So one more thing. Um, so as I mentioned, one other thing is this uh, fitting road segments uh, to complex uh, landscapes. And uh, another student uh, who, will, who has also developed the uh, space adventure demo that you will also be able to see in the lab. Uh, he is currently, uh, he was very into modeling these uh, complicated uh, road segments. So he has uh, begun developing an application inside of Unreal Engine 4, which allows to do just that. So uh, he uh, knows that, well, at least he told us that uh, several commercial uh, versions of this is available, but he decided to go his own way, <clears throat> just to make it kind of more legible for us to use as well. Uh, without royalties. So uh, he decided to implement it and this one uh, actually shows the result, the intermediate result. So we can actually change now these, um, change these busy um, curves so that finally he gets uh, exactly this elevation and everything right. Also something that he was working on is creating these uh, intersections. So. Um, uh, I haven't talked to him for a while, he's uh, quite a busy person, but in, in his spare time he's doing this work. So uh, it will be very interesting to see what he comes up with next, you know, with respect to this. Okay, <coughs> moving forward. Uh, we are also doing some architectural stuff, and uh, primarily this one is uh, developed by Ahmed, who is kind of here. You can also see him uh, on the uh, back of the building, a large picture. So, uh, he's currently recreating the whole thing, starting from the entrance point, and uh, this one is an old screenshot, by the way. So, uh, and the whole building so that virtual tu tours can be conducted. So, for further uh, marketing uh, of Mectory uh, outside of the university, maybe it can be accessed from, from, for, from anywhere, essentially. Maybe we can also implement some multiplayer um, feature there so that people can actually meet in that campus. But uh, we will see. So, what's this one? I have to reorg you myself. So, uh, this is uh, just a screenshot from the inside. Uh, there are many more, but I'm showing you only this. We also want to make a video out of it so we can show it in the same way. And uh, one more thing that I want to show you is uh, so called fantasy world uh, applications uh, because. Uh, immersion into fantasy world is something that cannot be experience, experienced otherwise. Uh, or maybe drugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, we want to make it accessible to everyone without uh, breaking the law. So this, is, this is something that we are actually working on. Uh, and this was developed by the same student uh, who has, uh, is currently doing work with uh, the road set. So it is a single student project and it took me maybe half a year to, to develop. Uh, this particular one is just some asteroid and trees going on there. 
So we have also um, uh, implemented some additional additional features. Uh, in essence, I just uh, I just uh, took his work and imported that one into the uh, new uh, Unreal Engine templates. Added some uh, interact interactive objects like these uh, rocks here um, and this guy there. Any fans of Futurama? So uh, so. Uh, that uh, people can actually experience uh, these uh, interactions and uh, see how, how these uh, basic physics work. So I need to practice my throwing, but punching is always working. <laughs> yeah. so, so you also get to experience this just to see, um, unless you have um, you know, seen this before, it's uh, very, very, very interesting just to see. Okay. Other than that, uh, our university has also been included as well in VR First Universities. Uh, this is a Crytek uh, program with their sponsors. So we have developed, our students have, been, have developed a few applications uh, for CryEngine. So this one, to the, uh, so this one with the knife, uh, this one is actually uh, again a single student project. Uh, there we have implemented a certain scenario. Uh, person is traversing this mysterious island and once he crosses a certain point then he gets thrown into the night time but he has to go through a ladder. Once he get there, uh, gets through it, opens the door and gets to see our world. So a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, surprise at the end. Okay, so uh, this is just to figure out how CryEngine works and um, he is going to defend his thesis uh, in, uh, in the near future. And this one is uh, about uh, modeling houses from uh, the town square, also in CryEngine, uh, so that we can actually uh, use all these nice features that it has, for instance, vegetation. So we can model really nice environments, and we decided to start with more or less tourist, tourist attraction. And uh, this is uh, what, what this application is meant for. So currently, I guess maybe five houses have been modeled and uh, imported into CryEngine and uh, implemented there. So finally, uh, a word of acknowledgement. So as I mentioned, we are part of this uh, VR First initiative. Um, sometimes they send us equipment, and unless it gets uh, lost uh, on the border, uh, we tend to get it. And also, our, our lab was actually funded on the um, funding provided by Kitsa. So we are very grateful for that. And since we are in Nectar, we decided to include that one as well. And Samsung has provided us with some uh, VR VR um, headsets, which uh, you can also uh, use once inside the lab. Uh, there is also one demo that we have uh, downloaded uh, via this uh, VR First program, which is the Chernobyl 360 uh, demo, or other application. So uh, unless uh, you know anything about it, you can experience it there as well. Okay, so that's it. That's it for my part. Uh, Up-to-date information can be obtained from recreation.ee, so you're welcome to visit, and um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>